the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Here's a preview. You got a gang of good old boys ready to run you out of town on a rail. Why? What did I do? Your mom, Marie's grand. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Nobody told you she was a witch. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Vincent Price. We are on a lonely stretch of highway in southern Louisiana, southwest of Baton Rouge, not far from Plaquemine and Bro Bridge, Napoleonville, and a little farther west, the thriving community of Lafayette. As you may have guessed, we are in that exotic area settled long ago by people of French ancestry, an area sometimes called Cajun country. The land is marked by moss-covered trees, lush green foliage, and countless miles of bayous, small rivers with slow, almost imperceptible currents that twist and bend their way past old plantations, rich farmland, and disappear into dark jungles and forests and murky swamps. Yes, there are alligators in the bayous beyond number, but there are other things even more fearful. Feu Follet, for example, or Lou Garou, evil spirits of the swamp who can change themselves into werewolves and whose black magic can terrorize an entire village. The car has turned onto a gravel road and paused before a sign that reads, Welcome to Mercy, Louisiana, population 205. We can see the driver consult a map. Obviously, she is a stranger in these parts. Right 10 miles to Dead Creek. <laughs> Dead Creek. Next, it'll be Hangman's Harbor. <laughs> Incredible. Her name is Deborah Sims, an intelligent, quite attractive woman in her late 20s. She is an assistant professor of anthropology from Iowa College. She has come to the bayous to study the native folklore. On the front seat beside her is a tape recorder, a stack of loose-leaf notebooks, pencils, and a box of spare tapes. On the back seat are suitcases. Deborah Sims is coming to Mercy to complete her doctoral thesis. But before her work is done, she will encounter devils and demons no textbooks warn of, and her life will hang in the balance. And that's only the beginning of our story. <laughs> Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of the Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Cajun Death by William Frew. Our stars, Linda K. Henning and Tommy Cook. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. <laughs> built along the banks of the Vermilion River, 205 God-fearing souls, fishermen, farmers, a handful of merchants, supplying the town's modest standard of living. There's a general store on the right, Bouchard's, and a market, the Legrand Brothers, and a bar, Pepe's, and a gas station, which is Deborah Sims' immediate destination. Be with you in a minute, ma'am. That's Tom Hendricks, the owner-operator of the station, a good-looking man in his mid-thirties. He's filling the tank of a van belonging to one Bobby Duquet, local ne'er-do-well, whose major occupation is guzzling boilermakers and shooting snooker. Howdy, ma'am. See by that there license plate, you all are from Iowa. <laughs> You're quite observant. Would you fill it up with unleaded, please? 
Oh, well, for a pretty lady like you, I surely would be obliged. <laughs> Even if the truth is, I don't work here. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought oh, no, that you... No need to be sorry, ma'am. I just plain like to help strangers, especially the female kind, especially when they're from Iowa. <laughs> My name's Bobby Duque. What's yours, sweet thing? Deborah Sims. Do you know how to get to Jed Buffum's cabin? Buffum's? You going way out there, Debbie? That's knee deep in the bayou. Check your oil and water, ma'am. Oh, well, now we got the genuine owner of the establishment here to take personal care of you, Debbie. How about that? Uh, knock it off, Bobby. Jed Buffum's place, ten miles north of town. You turn left at Crawford Junction, about another two miles and you're there. Thank you very much. Or oh, better yet, Debbie, I'll just take my van out of this here rip-off joint and lead you all the way there myself. Now, you ain't had a bet off on that all day, have you, Debbie? My name is Deborah. That's D-E-B-O-R-A. And that's an easy offer to refuse. Leave the lady alone, Bobby. That'll be $5.80, ma'am. Thank you. If I can assist you while you're in town, don't you hesitate to call on me. I'm... Tom Hendricks. Ooh, ain't old Tom the slick one. Tell you, Debbie, between him and me, there ain't no contest. He got the gas, but I got the class. You couldn't prove it by me. Thank you, Tom. Oh, you deserve that, Bobby. What's she doing here all the way from Iowa? Why's she going to Buffum's cabin? Maybe she wants to take a look at it. How should I know? Nobody been near that place since they fished Buffum's body out of that swamp. And they still don't know who killed him. Alcohol killed him. Everybody knows that. Yeah, I suppose alcohol bit off his leg. Doc said he was dead long before that gator took his leg. Yeah, well, I say you don't know. Wait a minute. Did you say her last name was Sims? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, well, I know so. Sims. Sims. Isn't that the name of that old woman used to live out that way? The one everybody said was consorting with the devil, said she was a genuine witch? Ma Marie? That's it. That's it. Ma Marie. Wasn't her, wasn't her last name Sims? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Sims. Man, this is no time for some witch's daughter to come trotting into town. Couldn't be her daughter. Ma Marie was a hundred years old when she died. Now, that would have to be her, her granddaughter, if she's any relation at all. Yeah. Well, maybe it's a coincidence. But Ma Marie died in Buffum's cabin. Looking for someone, ma'am? What? I didn't see you. Uh, where did you come from? The well, name's Preacher Coxie. I live down the road a piece, just checking things. Been some mighty funny noises coming out of Buffum's cabin in the last few nights. What kinds of noises? Well, like an old woman calling out. And sometimes like an animal. I wasn't about to come over here for a look until daylight. This place always did give me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I've got unpacking to do. You gonna stay here, ma'am? That's right. Well, why on earth would anybody stay in this town? I'm doing research on the bayous, Mr. Coxey. Can you think of a better place to begin? Well, sure. There's a motel 20 miles down the road. Ain't exactly the King's Palace, but it beats heck out of what you got here. Mr. Coxey, to drive 20 miles a day and back just to record what's right at my front door would seem like an enormous waste of time. Wouldn't you agree? But there's got to be some place better to rent than this. Here, let me help you with that stuff. I'm not renting it, Mr. Coxey. I own it. You own Buffum's cabin? What did you say your name was? Sims. Deborah Sims. You're related to Ma Marie? Marie Sims' granddaughter. Marie Sims' granddaughter. Was she called Ma Marie? You didn't know her? 
I'm sorry to say I didn't. She was my father's mother. He was killed in the Korean War when I was very young. I only know her by the letters she used to write me. Miss Sims, would you mind a suggestion from an old man? What is it? Leave here. Leave this town just as soon as you can. Why on earth would I do that? Well, folks around here feared your grandma. They say she cast evil spells, made crops turn bad, even worse things. Mr. Coxey, I'm a social anthropologist. My mother told me as much as she knew about my father's mother, but I came down here to find out more. Well, your grandma's been dead a dozen years. What's the point? I want to study the folklore and superstitions that surrounded her. Don't you see what an opportunity this is for me, to have someone that colorful in my own family? Boy, you can call it colorful, ma'am, but I call it plain with fire. You see that tape recorder, Mr. Coxey? Before the week is over, I want you to promise to tell me every story you've ever heard about grandmother, Okay. Well, if you really want to hear it. Oh, yes. Oh, I just know this is going to be the most memorable summer I've ever spent. What up? All right, another round of beers on Bobby Duque, baby. Sorry, Bobby, I'm closing up early today. Come on, Bobby. Finish what you was telling us. Yeah, yeah, yeah I want to hear. Interesting. All I know is what I say, Gus. Tape recorder in the front seat, suitcases in the back. Looks like the woman's come here to stay. And her name is really same, same as Ma Marie? That's a fact, Toko. She told me so herself. I knew Ma Marie. She was a loup-garou, and that's a fact. What kind of loup-garou, Gus? A werewolf. A kind can turn himself into a bird or a woman or anything it wants. A loup-garou can stop the rain, kill the crops, just like what's happening now. And if I didn't know better, I'd say there's one loose in mercy right now. The only thing loose in mercy, Toko, is the screws that are supposed to hold your brains together. <laughs> oh, you can laugh, Tom Hendricks, <laughs> because you ain't seen what I've seen. It was Mama Marie killed Jed Buffer. Oh, it's the craziest thing I ever heard. Mama Marie was dead ten years when Jed Buffum drank himself to death. And where do you people invent such tall tales? My daddy said she cast a spell on him from the grave. I never saw Jed Buffum drunk a day in this here saloon. That's the truth. Well, I never did hear you. He drank alone. I know because I sat with him many a night helping him sweat out the DTs. Whiskey killed him plain and simple. He was a tortured soul. Yeah, tortured by Ma Marie. Yeah. It's spooky, all right. What about this girl, Tom? I don't know any more than you do. She's related to Ma Marie. I better plug nickel. She's related, all right. She's her granddaughter. Well, well, I'll tell you what what is What's more, she owns Buffum's cabin. Ma Marie left oh. it to her in her will. Deborah Sims is going to be living here all summer. She's going to study the local folks. Say so she probably want to interview some of you. What about? Oh, tall tales, mostly. Superstition, Lugaru, Fufole, things her grandma wrote to her when she was alive. Man, that is heavy. This little lady is paddling in dangerous waters, wouldn't you say, boys? Mm, you won't catch me talking to her. And I ain't letting her within a mile of my house. Listen, it's only natural she'd want to know more about her family roots. You people are turning a granddaughter's normal curiosity into something weird. When your grandma is a witch, it is weird. <laughs> Nobody ever proved that. That old woman was eccentric, and that's all you could say. Well, I say we tell her to leave. I say if she won't, we run her out of town. Oh, you're acting crazy, all of you. The trouble with you, Hendricks, is you don't even recognize a serious problem when you see it. She hasn't done a thing to any of you. Now, you leave her alone, and you let her do her work in peace. Oh, Tom Hendricks, ain't her fault her grandma was Ma Marie. Well, I'm going to tell you all something. Something I ain't never told nobody before. I've seen a Lou Guru. Hey, 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 the night my baby took sick. Still hard for me to talk about. I had to find Doc Hennens. They told me he was at Toko's house. I remember that night. My wife had pneumonia. Well, to get to Toko's, I had to pass Jed Buffum's cabin. I slowed down because I seen lights inside. But Jed had been dead over a year. And nobody had moved in since. Now, who could it be, I asked myself. And 
I seen something in the shadows. Looked like an animal, but it walked on two legs, and I heard a voice calling me Ma Marie's voice. What did she say? She said, go home. Your baby is dead. Oh, no. <gasps> like an animal, but it had walked on two legs, and I heard a voice calling me Ma Marie's voice. What did she say? She said, go home. Your baby is dead. Oh, no. And when I got home, my baby was dead. Ma Marie killed him. She cast a spell. It is impossible. She'd been dead ten years. Make you wonder who that is in Buffon's cabin tonight. It make you wonder if Mama Marie has come back again to haunt us. I wish you hadn't told that story, Gus. Frightens me. More than any of you know. What is it, Pepe? You can tell us we're your friends. Yeah, come on, Pepe. What is it? We all know my wife is pregnant in the ninth month. This morning, she began to get bad pains, and we went to the doctor's office. He examined her and told her to go home and stay in bed until the baby comes. He says it will not be a normal delivery. Oh. But when we were at the doctor's office this morning, we saw the Sims woman drive into your gas station, Tom. We were both watching her when the doctor told us. Believe me, Pappy, it was pure coincidence. And what will you say if my baby dies? Mamory's granddaughter must live at once. I say so. <laughs> you are making a mistake, all of you. Ask Pepe. It's his baby you do any minute. Pepe. I want her out of town tonight. I am warning you. If you people hurt that girl, I'm going to report you to Ed Beaumont. Oh, come on, Tom. Our local peace officer's in New Orleans at the police convention, and you know it. He won't be back till next week. I don't want to wait until next week. Me neither. She's got to leave. And right now. Yes. <laughs> Deborah Sims has already begun her self-assigned task. Her tape recorder beside her, she paddles slowly through the bayous only a few yards offshore. Yet here, beneath the overhanging trees, the thick jungle growth, she is in another world. There, on her right, a giant crane. And over there, a water moccasin moving slowly through the dark water. Suddenly... Just beside her tiny boat, a black, scaly shape glides past, opens its jaws, and the water moccasin is devoured. The alligator, at least six feet in length, is so close, Deborah grabs her paddle, but it is useless. The reptile drifts past and into the dark shadows, and is gone as silently as it came. to some of the less accessible areas. Yeah, well, you just as well stay put right where you are, never mind the less accessible areas. Why? Because you got a gang of good old boys ready to run you out of town on a rail. Why? What did I do? Your Ma Marie's granddaughter. <laughs> What's wrong with that? And nobody told you she was a witch? That's nonsense. She was an eccentric old woman who liked to live alone and commune with nature. That hardly makes her a witch. As far as this town goes, she was too eccentric. 
tell you, sweet lady, you're in one heap of trouble. Thank you for your concern, Mr. Duquet, but I'm sure... Come on, Debbie, Debbie. Come on, now, you can call me Bobby, same as everyone else. Very well, Bobby. And you can call me Deborah, the same as everybody else. (laughs) Well, at least we're making progress. Come on, let me see it to your cabin. It's not necessary. You need protection, Deborah. Now, I'm not spoofing you one little bit. Those old boys figure you're a real Lou Garou. <laughs> Lou Garou? Me? Now, you can make fun of it all you like, but they weren't laughing down at Peppy's bar. They sent me to tell you to leave town tonight. What? They mean business, Debbie. Hey. Hey, you really clean this place up. It's just the beginning. In a few more days, you won't recognize it. Too bad you have to leave after all this work. I'm not going. Oh, now, you listen to me, Deborah Sims. I didn't drive all the way out here just to josh with you. Now, we got the worst drought on our hands in years. The fishermen doing so poorly, they can't even make a living. We got a couple of animals that wandered off into the bayous and didn't even come back. Animals in the bayous? Yeah, Gator probably got them. Maybe they drowned. It don't matter. Folks around here see some kind of black magic now mixed up in it. Ma Marie's kind of black magic. And they blame me? That's about it. <laughs> well, you tell them they don't frighten me. And also say that I'm staying. Now, if you don't mind, it's time for me to get to bed. You'd be one heck of a lot better off right now if you didn't sleep alone here. What? Now, purely for your own protection, I'm prepared to spend the night. For your safety, that's <laughs> Well, all. you can be prepared to turn right around and go home again. Now, Deborah, honey, listen. It's your best interest I'm thinking about. Would I drive all the way out here if I didn't want to help you? Get away from me. Oh, come on now, honey. Give me a little... Uh, let go of me. Come on, baby. You're going to like it. Don't oh. give yourself half a chin. Let me go. Oh, just get warmed up, honey. The best is yet to come. Well, I hate to have to do this, but... Oh, oh. Oh. Well, I've studied self-defense, Bobby. You gave me no choice. Oh, I'll get you for this. So oh, help me. Do you want me to help you up? Or can you walk out under your own power? Oh... Oh, you're going to be sorry you did that. Oh, you're going to be mighty sorry. Bobby Duque, you hear me? You're not going to frighten me away from here. Go home and let me sleep. Well, that's better. And tell the rest of them I'm not leaving. What? Uh, who is it? It's me, Preacher Cochie. Are you all right? Uh, 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 just a minute. I heard you calling, Miss Sims. You sure you're all right? Oh, is that fool Bobby Duque trying to frighten me? Making crazy noises, waking me up. I didn't see anybody, Miss Sims. I've been outside for the past hour. You didn't see anyone? No, ma'am. Didn't see and didn't hear nothing, either. What were you doing here? Well, Bobby and a couple of the boys were getting liquored up in town, and I was afraid they might drive out here and do something they could be sorry for in the morning. Then there wasn't anybody outside my window? No, ma'am. I've been here all along. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Coxey. I really appreciate your concern. I... I guess I don't understand these people as well as I ought to. No, ma'am. This here is Bayou country. Not like Iowa. Not at all. I think you ought to reconsider about leaving. They're not going to give you any peace until you do. No. No, my mind's made up. This is exactly what I came here to learn about. The fact that it's happening to me will make the experience all the more valid for my dissertation. Thank you again. I'll say good night now. Good night, Miss Sims. If you need me, I'll be out that way, sleeping in the back of that old van there. Oh, yes, I see it. Good night. Good night, ma'am. I've got to record all this. It's invaluable. February 10th, second day. Tonight I was awakened by... On earth? The storage room? Ah! Ah! Oh! What is it? What, what, 
what was going on. No. Oh, no. Get it out of here. Get it out of here. The carcass of an alligator. Uh, Must have been dead for days. Who would have stand? Uh, who would do a thing like that? A dead alligator? I told you oh. the folks want you to leave, oh. ma'am, but you wouldn't listen. Uh, th then you saw them? You, you saw who did it? No, ma'am, but... I was in my van. Maybe they come around the back. Oh. Did you hear footsteps, voices, anything before it happened? No, it hid. Just, oh, oh, get it out of here, please. Yes, ma'am. Oh. oh. That's a mess, all right, all that blood and rotted flesh. Lordy, they sure made their point. No. No, I'm afraid they didn't. Ma'am? I am not leaving. <laughs> Vincent Price again. And here's the concluding act of Cajun Death. Miss Sims! Miss Sims, you in there? you, Mr. Coxey. Say, you don't look well, Miss Sims. Oh, I'm all right. I, I couldn't get to sleep. I had to take a sleeping pill. Well, I hate to wake you up with bad news. <clears throat> what is it? It's your car, ma'am. What about it? Somebody must have done it during the night while we was both sleeping. Done what? Written that stuff all over your car. <laughs> what stuff? Lou, garou, fou, folle, all them French superstition words. It's a mess. Oh, no. It ain't going to be easy to clean it up, but I'll help you if you like. Oh, I'll, I'll take it down to the gas station. Perhaps they can help me. Well, Tom Hendricks is a good man, but even he's not apt to want to do this job. Why? It's dried hard now, but it's pretty obvious it was written in blood. <laughs> Help you, ma'am. Hey, what happened to your car? A souvenir left by some of your friends. Alligator blood. Mr. Coxey and I cleaned it up as best we could, but it sure could use more work. Well, I got a young man who does clean-up jobs, but from the looks of it, it, it'll take him a couple of hours at least. Oh, and just incidentally, Miss Sims, the folks who did this are no friends of mine. Not Bobby Duque? No, ma'am. He's a born troublemaker. Daddy died, left him a fat bank account in one of the best plantations around. Bobby hasn't done a lick of work since he left college. And the rest of his friends? Oh, they're not bad folks at heart. But times have been rough this year. Bad crops, empty fish nets. And like most people, they're looking for somebody to blame. Well, I'm not going to be their scapegoat, Mr. Hendricks. I don't blame you, Miss Sims, but sometimes... You just have to accept reality. <laughs> Lou, Garou, and Fu Filet are reality? Maybe not to you and me, but to them they are. Take my advice, Miss Sims. Leave town. You all come back in the fall, maybe, when things are better. My dissertation is due in the fall, Mr. Hendricks. I've put in a lot of years working for my doctorate. It means a very great deal to me. I'm not going to give it up just when I'm finally reaching my goal. All right, all right. Have it your way. But if you need help, don't you hesitate to call on me. Thank you. I appreciate it, really. Now, if you'll take care of cleaning up this trick-or-treat mess the good old boys left on my car, I'll get to work. We'll have it done by 3 o'clock at the latest. Thanks. I wish there were more like you and Mercy, Mr. Hendricks. Well, it, it's mutual, Miss Sims. It's Deborah. Okay, Tom? <laughs> All right. You are a fool, Deborah Sims, but a mighty attractive one. What do you want? Oh, uh, I'm Deborah Sims. I'd like to talk... I know who you are. Get off my property. You're Peppy, the man who owns the bar? That's right, and you're trespassing. Well, I just want to interview your wife. I understand she knew my grandmother. You stay away from her. Do you understand? I don't want you to come near her. Oh, uh, Mrs. Pepper? 
Yes? Go back inside, quickly. Oh, what? No, but, but I only wanted... If you ever come near my wife again, I'll kill you. Uh... But I only want to talk to you for a few minutes, Mr. Vickers. Get off that dock. You stay away from my fish there. Well, at least explain what it is you fear. I told you to leave town, and you better listen. And don't you never come back. I'm telling you for the last time. If you earn off my land within one minute, I'm going to throw you off. Car's ready, Miss Sims. What do I owe you? Make it five dollars, even. Oh, all day, and not one person would talk to me. I don't understand. Ma'am, they're worried and frightened. Some of them have had to mortgage their home. Some of them haven't earned a day's wages in weeks. But I'm not to blame. Well, excuse me. Your car's over there. Tom Hendricks? What? Huh? See, uh, uh, yes, uh, yeah, okay. Yes, thanks. Deborah. What is it? What happened? Get in that car of yours, and you drive out of town as fast as you can. Oh, why? W what happened? Pepe's wife was rushed to the hospital an hour ago. The baby was born dead. <laughs> Oh, Marie, come back to haunt us. We've got to do something. Well, I say throw it to the gators. Right. And watch us swim. Everybody out to Buffum's cabin. Get rid of her, we'll get rid of the Lou Guru once the ball. Yeah, 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 yeah. Miss Sims, Miss Sims, it's Preacher Copsy. Open up. Yes? There's a half dozen men on the way out here right now coming to get you. What? Peppy's wife give birth to a stillborn child just after you were at the house. You got to get out of here fast. Oh, where can I go? Well, you get in that car, you and you head north. With some luck, you can outrun them. Meantime, I'll call the sheriff over in Lafayette. Okay. Oh, it's too late. That's them. Oh, well, what'll I do? I, I, get in that rowboat and paddle yourself back into the swamps just as fast as you can. Be dark soon. Won't be easy to find you. Meantime, I'll try to stow them. Oh, thanks, Mr. Coxey. Oh, oh Wait. What do you need with a tape recorder at a time like this? Well, I haven't got time to explain. All right, where's she at, Coxie? Nice to find, though. She was gone when I got here. Her car's still here. She couldn't have gone very far. Wait. The robot's gone. All right, boys, we'll start combing the swamp. She can't be very far in there. Uh, here, look at the big, big ram behind me. Come on. Anybody bring flashlights? It's getting awful dark. I've got one in my truck. Well, get it. I don't like it going in here after that woman. It's all right, it's all right. We'll be okay. We'll stick together. What's that? Oh, it's just a hoot owl. Come on, boys. I left my flashlight at home. What's that? I'm not sure. Me either. Fearfully. I've seen them before. Swamp devils. Oh, no, that, that, that's crazy. They ain't no such thing. Oh, God, I don't like it. It's too dark to make out. Who? Who? Who's out there? Ma Marie is here. Ma Marie is near you. Lord help us. Coco, who is it? I can't see. 
Listen. Listen to my creatures of this world. Gotta get out of here. Yeah, baby, all right. If you are my granddaughter, if you are me, I will make you vanish in the fire, never to be seen again. I'm getting out of here. Yeah. Let me go. Come on. If you ever come back to my cabin again. What happened? Why did they run away? They heard and saw the real thing. What? It's a fact. A voice from the past, Mama Marie's voice. And exploding swamp lights. It, it was fearsome. Where's Deborah? Looks like she's coming in now. You all right, Deborah? I, I'm okay, Tom. Thanks. Would you mind getting my tape recorder? Yeah, sure thing. That's where the sounds were coming from. Your tape. I'm not sure. Hey, the tape is stuck. Look. The machine isn't working. Deborah, where did the sounds come from? And Ma Marie's voice. I don't know, Tom. Honest. It, it was just there, all around me. The sounds. And the voice. The presence. I... I can't describe it. Deborah, Was it... you? Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Cajun Death was written by William Frew, produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Linda K. Henning and Tommy Cook. Also heard were Eddie Firestone, Barney Phillips, Lynn Berman, Carly Bear, Don Diamond, and Lillian Byatt. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.